Where are you headed? Chicago, eventually. Me too, but I've got to get there before then. Say, uh, could you pick up another Marine? Just down the road. We thought if we split up, why we Oh, could... very smart. Ah. What's your name? Smith. Well, hey, uh, did you pick up another Marine? What is this? An ambush? <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, right down the road a little ways. Okay. What's your name? Smith. Chicago. All right, Bootley. Uh, my name's Smith. Are you all named Smith? Yep, all named Smith. All the same outfit and all going to Chicago on a 30-day furlough. <laughs> well. What's your name, honey pie? Uh, Hetty Fredericks. Miss or Mrs.? Neither. Well, you got to be one or the other. Oh, it's Dr. Dr. Hetty Fredericks. You know, I bet we could make Chicago by tomorrow morning if we drove all night. Well, I'm awfully sorry to interfere with a war effort, but I've got to stop at Blythefield. How long are we stuck there? Just overnight. All right, we'll wait for you. Well, it's awfully kind of you, but I'm afraid you'll find Blythefield a little dull. The town's growth was stunted. I thought you said this town's growth was stunted. Something must have happened to its pituitary gland. I used to know everyone in town. Now I don't see him. Yes, I do. There's little Smedley Hoover. Oh, Smedley! She wants you. What for? That's what I'd like to know. It's me, Hetty. I saw the girl before in my life. Probably not in the daylight. Go on, don't mind me. You don't even recognize me. I'm Hetty Fredericks. This is little Smedley Hoover. That is, he used to be little Smedley. Now he's big Smedley. They're all named Smith. Isn't that convenient? Hi, Max. <laughs> How have you been all these years, Smith? I'm sorry, but you've got me wrong. My name is... Look me in the eye and tell me you're not little Smedley Hoover. I can look you in both eyes and tell you I'm not little Smedley Hoover. You mean to tell me you're not little Smedley Hoover that used to live on Maple Street and went to number three school with me? I am sorry to disappoint you, but my name is Morgan Hale. Two. Well, I'm all alone. Maybe just one? Yes, two. We've been waiting. Thank you. I still think you're fooling. No one else could look so much like little Smedley. Madam, once and for all, please believe me, I am not little Smedley. I never was little Smedley, and you've made me lose my place in the line. Now, if you'll please pardon me. Well, you needn't be so snippy about it. All right, Max, shove on. Go on, hit the road. No, it's, it's all so confusing. Three Smith, no Smedley. I was just here with the young lady. I was you may be supposed to be, but you ain't. I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but get in the back of the line, please, sir. Back of the line, please. Imagine leaving you for any other girl. What does he do with the plane? Mm, he's a test pilot. You know. Well, that must be fun. Unless the wings come off. Uh-oh, there he is now, and he looks cross. I didn't quite get your name. Walton. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Mr. Hale? Mr. Walton. Tommy, hello. Oh, very...
Bumble. How's the goiter? I'm chilling. Yeah, oh, yes, that's right. Good morning. How's it do, Doc? Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Mr. Graham? Well, I'm here, ain't I? Hey, uh, yes. Say, Doc, I gotta see you right away. I'm as weak as a cat. Well, you just stay here and watch for a mouse until I can get to you. Better get rid of these patients before Hetty comes. They'll scare her to death. You know, Kravitz, there's no possible reason why Hetty won't be glad to stay here and help me out. At least until this gastrointestinal rush is over. And then all we'll have to worry about are the pneumonia. Yes, yes, that's all. Just the pneumonia. Oh, now look at this. Do I have to put this on with this? The laundry's two months behind now. If I scold them, they'll quit altogether and go make flying machines. What makes you think she'll stay? Well, to begin with, I'm her uncle. Isn't that enough? Wouldn't be for me. Hmm. Oh, that's better. No sign on that one. Well, she's got to stay. You leave it to me. I'll fix it. Here you are, Otto Park. This is the way. Hey, uh, uh, Otto Park, this way. Right in here. That's odd. Oh, heavy. The duck's been waiting for you. Oh, well. Play a liberty party. <laughs> Look how she learned our language. Hiya, Mrs. Pringle. How does it seem to be home? Oh, fine. Even if it is for just a night. <laughs> yeah. Otto Park. Otto Park, this way. Where did you get that voice? Yellen. Yeah, well, you go right in and see the dark. See the dark. <laughs> He's got appointments till 1947. <laughs> Well, 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 where the devil have you been? Oh, I got here as fast as I could. And Miss Kravitz, how are you? Terrible. I've been trying to get an appointment with the doctor myself since the 4th of July. Oh. How long can you stay? Only until tomorrow morning. I wish I could stay, but I must be in Chicago by Thursday. Well, every minute helps. Here you are. Now get this prescription filled and try to keep up your strength, will you, as a personal favor to me? All right, Doc. Who's next, Kravitz? Grover Cleveland Perkins, pleurisy. Haven't we got that mummy out of the plaster yet? He's been in that cocoon three weeks now, and he wants out. Uh, well, bring him out of the line of scrimmage. Oh, wait a minute, Miss Kravitz. First, Uncle Doc, I want you to meet three Marines. They're going on to Chicago with me. I thought maybe you could put them up for tonight, huh? I'll call them. Here we are, Doc. My Blythefield Expeditionary Boy. My uncle, Dr. Fredericks. Smith, Smith. And Smith. They're all named Smith. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> well, hello, Smith. How are you? And Miss Kravitz? Kravitz, see if you can find a nice place for the boys to sleep tonight. Oh, immediately. Of course you know, Dr. Hetty, there isn't a bed in this town. Oh, you can find some place, Miss Kravitz. Hmm. I have it. Let them get drunk and spend the night in jail. Uh, uh, what about the attic? There's no one up there, is there? Only the skeleton. Well, that's fine. Then put them to bed with Mr. Bones. Boys, what are you doing? Put that down, bottle baby. Whatever this guy's got, it wiggles. Hey, where are the toenail clippers? Come on. Now, let's see. Grover Cleveland Perkins. Hm, you remember Chatty Perkins, the one-man debating team? When can we sit down and have a real chat? Uncle Doc, I have so little time to be with you. As soon as you help me get rid of these patients. Yeah, uh, this way, Mr. Perkins. Oh, thank you, Doc. Eddie, take off your uh, coat and shirt, Mr. Perkins. Hmm? Uh, it's all right. This is my niece, Dr. Frederick. Oh, <laughs> Just look how the population in this town has increased, Hetty. And there's only old Doc Blake and myself. You'd be an awful lot of help, you know. Well, I should think so. This is no time to bury yourself in a research laboratory. And besides... Well, now, I don't know about that, Doc. <clears throat> no, sir. Uh, you know, there's two sides to every question. Yeah, please, try and be quiet, will you, Mr. Burton? We want to find out if you have any media stinal disturbances. And if there are none, we'll take that plaster off the jiffy. Mm. All right. I can understand you're not liking plastic surgery. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. So can I, Doc. Come in here, will you, Mr. Perkins? Yes. I may be burying myself in the Enderley Foundation, but it's a more reasonable division of life. Some of the time would be my own. Oh, yes, and I can understand just exactly what she means, Doc. Mm -hmm. uh, at night, she could change her clothes and go out and make... Oh, yes. Yeah. I wish you'd stop exerting yourself, Mr. Perkins. Well, it isn't quite that, but Mr. Perkins has the idea you see, Uncle Doc, being a physician and surgeon doesn't give a woman much opportunity to be, well, just a woman. I know, Hetty, but why? Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. No! Oh. 
I wish I could persuade you to stay, Hetty. We need ten dollars. Okay. Now, don't you let him get you down. Well, thanks, Mr. Perkins. I'm going on to Chicago tomorrow. And from nine in the morning till six at night, I'll give suffering humanity everything I've got with a microscope and a test tube. And then I'm going home and put on a silly dress and forget that I'm Hetty Fredericks, M.D. Yes, but why? Doc, there, you see what I tell you, Doc? And she is absolutely right. Uh, oh, no, don't take me seriously, Doc. Oh, please, don't take me seriously. I just love to talk, mm. Doc. Please, oh! oh. oh. No, everything that I said goes, Doc. And don't you weaken. I won't. Come back tomorrow, Mr. Perkins, if you dare. Well, now that we've had a nice little visit with Brother Perkins, we'll run through the rest of the customers, and then we'll drive over to the plant. I want to show you the new hospital, Eddie. Oh, that'd be fine. <laughs> it's cold. Oh, Uncle Doc, there was something I wanted to ask you. Yeah? Whatever became of little Smedley Hoover? Yeah. Oh, he's still hanging around the drugstore. Here we are. Don't park right this way. Uh, wonderful, Mrs. Pringle. Just keep taking those lozenges. <laughs> Get my niece's car, will you? And put it on my bill. Oh, oh, the reason I asked about Smedley, there's a fellow here who's a dead ringer for him. Is that so? A character named Morgan Hale. Oh, I know him. He works down at the plant, but he doesn't look anything like Smedley. Why, he looks exactly like Smedley should look, if he looks now the way he ought to look from the way he looked then. What, uh, what was that again? Here we are. All the equipment you'd need to work with. This is my niece, Dr. Frederick, ladies. How do you do? Just look at those tools, Hetty. Doesn't that make you want to whittle, huh? It is magnificent. Say the word, and you're on the staff starting tomorrow morning. Starting tomorrow morning, I'm on the staff of the Enderley Foundation. Yeah. <clears throat> All we need is doctors. You know, everybody thought Pope was crazy, but this hospital will take care of half the state after the war. The last time I saw Mr. Pope, he fixed my bicycle for me in that little shop on Gibson Street. Remember? Yes, yes. Now, I want you to see our wonderful ward, Hetty, and there's a couple of convalescents I'd like you to meet. Yes, well, you give them my regards, Uncle Doc. I'm going to run up and see Mr. Pope. Yes, but Hetty, I'm... Let me know when you're leaving. You... Oh, doggone it. Hi, boss. Want me? Where in the high octane have you been? Lunch. Three hours and 48 minutes? Yeah, some dizzy dame delayed me. And when I finally got in, the food was terrible. And then it cost me a dollar and a half. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, no, it didn't cost you a dollar and a half. What do you mean it didn't? It cost you a thousand dollars. Washington wanted the B-76 set down in Guam in 21 hours. There was a thousand dollar bonus in it. Well, I can still make it. No, oh, no, you can't. Not unless you can fly faster than the B-76. Johnson took off an hour ago. I couldn't take a chance. But don't worry about it. What's a thousand dollars, more or less? What's the war, more or less? What's anything, more or less, when you're having lunch with a girl? I assume she was beautiful, at least a thousand dollars worth. What in thunder do I smell? That's high perfume. It's spilled. Well, why don't you just put a little dab behind your ears in the morning instead of carrying the bottle around with you? Well, it was for that girl I was supposed to have lunch with today. That dizzy dame had Oh, I've got complications enough without you and your women. What are you doing tonight? I've got a date to try to square with the girl I was supposed to have lunch with. Sorry. You've got a date to try to square yourself with me. Puchinsky of the Russian purchasing office gets in tonight. They want a test of our flame dampener. I'll take the comrade to dinner and be ready to fly the test as soon as it's dark enough. Oh, can't we put this off till tomorrow? Not unless you want to resign and devote yourself exclusively to love. Now get going. Okay, boss. <laughs> So sorry. Lady, I don't know where you came from, but I wish you'd go back. Why, Eddie? Hello, Mr. Pope. How are you? Ah, isn't this grand? <laughs> Not much like the old bicycle shop on Gibson Street. That's a fine way to spend a furlough. All we get's a ride to Chicago. In the meantime, we've wasted a night. Oh, and listen, Dick. I'd waste tonight any time to ride 600 miles in the front seat with Hetty. Hey, by the way, where's that little wolf, Tommy? Oh, oh. the old battle axe has probably got him working somewhere. Gee, this is swell of you, Miss Kravitz. You can call me Martha. I'm Tommy. I can't understand why this chicken should be so tough. I cooked it for two hours in this sterilizer. Now, we used to have a cook, but she's getting $75 a week at the plant now. Poor doctor. He lives on peanuts and pop. You're a sweet child. You're a cute little trick yourself. Oh. <laughs> this is our last stop. You remember Stella Livingston? 
Yes. What's wrong with her? Well, she got hurt when an emery wheel blew up at the plant and cut her face to ribbon. Oh, I'm sorry. She was such a pretty girl. Well, I'm afraid she won't be anymore. Hello, Doctor. Well, <laughs> How do you do, Mrs. Moriarty? This is my niece, Dr. Fredericks. How do you do? Uh, go in and see Stella, will you, Hetty, and I'll wash my hands. She's in there. Stella. Hetty. Oh, how it's wonderful to see you again. Uncle Doc told me what happened. I, I said I look a fright. I can't even fix my hair, and I know the house is a mess. The house is as neat as a pin. Mrs. Moriarty's been very kind, taking care of me while Mother's at the plant. But I'm afraid I'm an awful nuisance to everyone. Twenty dollars a week compensation, and twenty years added to the poor darling's looks. Oh, Hetty, am I going to look terrible? Of course not, dear. Well, now let's get these bandages off and see how she's doing, hmm? She's been a brave soldier, Hetty. Took them three hours to find me when this thing happened. Only two doctors in this town bad situation. Just a minute, dear. There we get it. Ah. Now, let's see. Well, not bad, not bad at all. How long has it been, Stella? Six days and five hours. Mm -hmm. Just put your hand there, will you, dear? <laughs> Did you notice how those sutures are holding? Hmm? Yes. You're going to be just fine. Will, will there be many scars? No, no, I don't think so. Of course, it's a little early yet. You want to be scarred, Hetty? No, you're going to be all right. Just as pretty as ever. Well, how long will it take? Oh, a week or two. By Halloween, you'll be ready for a party. Halloween? That's all I've been thinking about sitting here. Halloween. A big yellow pumpkin with a face cut in it. Will I look like a pumpkin with just holes for my eyes and nose and mouth? No, dear. Oh, you wouldn't say that just to make me feel better like Mother and Mrs. Moriarty, would you? Now, 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 come now. You be a good girl and stop worrying. You're going to be able to see with your eyes and breathe through your nose and kiss with your mouth. What more do you want, huh? <laughs> come here, dear. Do you have to go, Hetty? Well, I really should. I've, I've got to leave for Chicago very early in the morning. Oh, don't cry, Stella. Tell your mother I'll drop by in a day or two, Stella. Come on, Hattie. Do you know what her face is going to look like? Yes, yes, I know. But I can't help it. I, I'm not a plastic surgeon, and they haven't money enough to take her to Chicago. But we can't leave her like this. She was the prettiest girl in town. Yeah. Well... I don't know what we're going to do about it. Stop. I know what we're going to do about it. I'm Stella's mother. Stella who? Stella Livingston. She's in there. Livingston Stella, plastic surgery, Dr. Hetty Fredericks operating, Dr. J.H. Fredericks assisting. Sit over there, Mrs. Livingston. Thank you. Do you think she's going to be all right? I have no way of knowing. blood pressure good. Ty, doing your subcutaneous closure so it won't leave a scar. Suit you. Thanks, Uncle Doc. Thanks for the lesson. Is she all right? I'm sure she is. You've nothing more to worry about. No, okay. Uh, Hetty, I think we'd better change, huh? Your uncle told me he thought he could get you to operate on Stella, but I'd almost given up hope. 
Well, when did he stay there? Well, ever since the accident. Uh, well, I just assumed, Eddie, oh, that I you... Oh, I see. Well, Dr. Fredericks will change her dressings when it's necessary. I'm leaving for Chicago in the morning. Nice try, though, Uncle Doc. Like this in a town where the mayor used to live in a haystack. <laughs> That's what aviation does. Wings for the farmer's daughter. Give me the farmer's daughter. Lovely. Sorry, no tables. Only reservations. Is it hopeless? Well, uh, we'll just stand around and watch the girls go by. You know, you can never tell when some little Elsie's lab will show up with, without a destroyer escort. Oh, well, let's get a drink. That's just the time the Marines score. Yes, yes, a couple sir. of martinis, Waldo, will you? No olives. Right away, Miss Ford. I've been trying to believe you didn't know that girl you held hands with all day. I never saw that girl before in my whole life, and I swear I hope I never see her again. I wonder. Martinis, please. How are we doing, Walter? Coming around. We're not having much luck here. You think we could try the dining room again? Oh, good evening. Good evening. Well, if it isn't, Spadley. Will you excuse me a moment, please? Oh, of course. No girl sings good evening in that tone of voice unless at some time or another you've given her a very good evening. Let's not start that again, darling. Let's go sit down and have a nice quiet dinner. I trust you, dear. Really, I do. Just as far as I could throw St. Patrick's Cathedral by the steeple. I forgot to tell you, the boss wants me to take care of a, a Russian pilot tonight. He's a sort of a purchasing agent or something. Oh, that's all right. He might be interested. Might well, you be. know, Smedley? Yeah. Hiya, uh, Smedley, old kid, old stuff. But don't you remember us? Yeah. Hi, babe. Why do they call you Smedley? Do you mind if I sort of explain that to you a little later? Come on, Hale. Oh, Mr. Morgan Hale. Here I am, mister. Are you Mr. Morgan Hale? Yeah. Follow me, big boy. I'll be right back, Augustus. Wait for me, honey. Oh, no, you don't. I'm going with you. Say, can't you trust me as far as the telephone? Say, uh, we'll just step inside and wait for good old Morgan. It's just a little table for two. Come again, Megan. Now, just put in a few extra chairs. Oh, uh, Neil, I'm a waiter, not a cop. Three extra chairs for Mr. Hale's table. Three extra chairs? Ah, uh, four. Four? Four. Yeah, one on top of the other. I'm sorry I took so long powdering. There were 42 noses ahead of mine. <laughs> Look, madam, the table is only 17 and a half inches in diameter. What are we going to do with a table that small? With six people. Well, we might cut it up into toothpicks. <laughs> table 22. What's this all about? Well, uh, Smedley's invited us to join his party. But why? Come on, this is no time to question a guy's patriotism. Yeah. Well, of course, I still can't understand. If you never saw the woman before, why are you so chummy with all of her friends? I'm not chummy with her friends. Her friends are chummy with me. Of course, I realize you're catnip to women, but when you're with me, you... I resent that. As long as I've been with you, I've been as true as I true could... True as a $2 cornet. Well, what am I supposed to do when someone... Well, what am I supposed to do when a woman I've never seen before looks at me? Drop your eyes and turn up your nose, dear. You? Uh, you? But you can't be. I, 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 they put women up in the... Women in Russian skies? Well, uh, it's a good idea, and I'm all for it and everything, but uh, I was a little surprised. You'd be too if you expected a great big tall fellow about this high with a big black beard. Oh, you are disappointed. Oh, no. No, not at all. Uh, this is uh, Mr. I, I, I Comrade uh, Putinsky. Uh, she's a girl. Oh, really? Yes, this is Miss Cross. Hello. You know, you have such wonderful names in English. So descriptive. Your charming secretary is named Cross. In Russian, it is Sergiti. It means the same. Cross. Angry. You catch? Yeah, I catch. Well, while you two are playing catch, I want to make it clear. I'm not secretary. Well, now, let's have dinner. It's all ready. It's right down here, please. And your name? Uh, Hale. It is Starovia. Big, strong, healthy. Now, which way we go? Augustus. Right this way, Augustus. Augustus. Mm. I forgot to tell you, I've added one more on my table. One more. Yeah. Certainly. 
Five more. Ten more. What does it matter? Accommodate any number. All we've got to do is put in more chairs. Expand the walls. We can... Your table, Mr. Hale. Well, uh, here we are, Smedley. Hey. Maybe you think we didn't have a tough time holding this table for you. Well, isn't this nice? I didn't know we were going to have a party. Fun for all. Won't you introduce us, Katniss? Miss Fredericks, Miss Cross, and Comrade Krichinskaya. Oh, Smith, Smith, and Smith. How do you do? How do you do? Well, uh, let's uh, make ourselves at home. Sit down, sit down, everybody. Comrade, right over here. But we were just ordering. I beg your pardon, mister. Oh, we seem to be one chair short, even if there were a place to put it. What are you going to have? Move over, Smedley. We'll sit together until they find another chair. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not hungry. I had a late lunch. Very late. You're fat at night figure. How about this? Oh, thanks. I'd love to. Sing. There is an idea. Yes. Carmen, how about a fast Kazaski, huh? <laughs> Wonderful. Teddy? Yes, oh, well, that would be fine. Uh, are you sure you don't mind being left by yourself? Oh, not at all. I enjoy watching young people have a good time. Uh, well, don't go away, Smed, old kid. I won't. Uh, I beg your pardon. It's wonderful what a uniform will do, isn't it? Amazing. Yes, sir, we can't do enough for them. Apparently not. What do you do? I'm a test pilot. Mm, just like waiting on table. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Comrade, you catch? Da, I catch. Are you like Bozaks of my own country? So vile and so strong. <laughs> Is that bad? No, that's very good. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, we leave tomorrow. Oh, no, you can't go tomorrow. I think you're right, Sugar. There's no sense in starting a fire than putting it right out again. But what about sitting bull? Say, as far as I'm concerned, he's the forgotten man. It's awfully rude leaving our host by himself. I think I'll go back and sit the rest of this out with him. Do you mind? No, of course not. I'll just go right on dancing by myself. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Tommy's having a wonderful time. He's just young enough to be dazzled by a girl of that formula. Miss Cross is a very dear friend of mine. A very nice girl. That must be such a consolation to you. She's not merely ornamental. She's in there pitching. Yes, she seems to be. At the plant doing wall work. Now, that's a coincidence. Tommy's in war work, too. If you're insinuating that I should be in a uniform... Oh, the thought never occurred to me until you mentioned it. You might be interested to know I have what I consider a very important watcher. Well, I'm, I'm sure you do. And what about you? I don't see you in a uniform. Look, if you feel so unhappy about everything, why did you ask us to join your party? I didn't ask you to join my party. You just horned in. What? What is such lovely party? Yeah, it's lovely, comrade, but you'll have to hurry with your dinner because we're expected at the airfield at 10 o'clock. Oh, yes, Med, what goes on here? Uh, what's cooking, huh, kid? Mr. Hale flying test for my government. Oh, how interesting. He must come back and tell us all about it someday. A test pilot? Yeah, is that bad? Hey, uh, Smed, if you're a test pilot, everything's forgiven, huh? Well, gee, thanks. But didn't you know? I thought you two were old friends. No. Oh, he's magnificent, this pilot. Is that not so, Morg? Say, I don't know how it is in Russian, but in English, Morg is a very bad nickname for a test pilot. <laughs> As you can see, this flame damper can be attached to any exhaust manifold on any plane in a few minutes. There's been a lot of these things designed, but we think this one's a dilly. Come on now. This one is called dilly. You would be amazed how many planes we have lost because the enemy can follow the flare from their exhaust against the night sky. Yes, I know. The test will have to be made in complete darkness. I'll go to the tower to supervise. I'll see you later. Stop. 
the music. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, attention please. The lights on the field and in the hotel and cafe will be extinguished for the purposes of an important government flight test. Well, say, why don't we just stay here? We can get a wonderful view of the field from the balcony. I think it'd be dangerous flying in the dark. Oh, you've no idea how Morgan can get around in the dark. Or have you? Come on, kids. Tell Hale to turn off his lights. NC-678, this is Blightfield Tower. Over. Blightfield Tower, this is NC-678. Go ahead. Okay, Morgan, turn off your lights. Turn off all the airport lights. Yes, sir. Let's go. NC six seven eight. Okay, Hale. Let's go. Good evening, Dr. Frederick. Good evening. Is Dr. Blake here? We haven't been able to locate him as yet. Did you try to get my uncle? Well, he's out on a call. Oh. Boston 120, respiration 35, temperature 96. Slight vasomotor syndrome. Is he badly hurt? No, it looks like a slight concussion and skin lesion. Nothing serious, but it does need immediate attention. I'm George Hastings, doctor, a friend of Mr. Hale's. Oh, how do you do? Thank you. There she is again. What are you doing here? I'm going to do a stitching job on you. Not on me. I'm waiting for Dr. Fredericks. Well, he won't be here till after midnight. You should have some needlework done right away. She'll probably do it neater anyhow, being a lady. Well, thanks very much. But if you don't mind, I'll wait for Dr. Fredericks. She's a physician and surgeon, too. Who is? She is. Oh, no. Certainly. She can't be. Yeah, well, well. What do you know? Well, I'll take a pill, but no crocheting. Can you stand a little pain, or does baby want some soothing syrup? Just use a little stickum plaster, nothing too fancy. That's the way that plane was put together. We want you to last longer. Well, thank you. Now, here we go. You hurt much? Hmm, I can take it if you can. Don't worry about me. I can stitch like this all night. Now, we... Tie a knot in it so you won't unravel. How about a drink? By all means. Spiritus Fermenti, one ounce. Will you have one with me? Why not? Spiritus Fermenti, two ounces. Hey, how come you get two ounces and I only get one? Who's done all the work? <laughs> you have. You've done a swell job. There. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Here's to you, Doctor. Pain? Hungry. Well, then you'd better eat. Swell. Will you have dinner with me? Well, I'm afraid I'm too busy. Thanks, just the same. Well, I'll wait around. I've nothing to do tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Neither have I. Go home to your wife. How about it, Doctor? Well, I'm sorry, but I simply won't have time. You can call me if your head aches too badly. Well, you're sending me away terribly hurt. Was that a little scratch? Run along, Sonny. Well, uh, how about tomorrow night? If you insist. Great. Where? Chicago. I'm leaving in the morning. Good night. 
It beats that powdered stuff. Yeah, I'll bet it does. Good morning, everybody. Well, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Say, what happened to you last night? We got in at 3 o'clock, and you were still out. Uh, at your service. Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> How do you know? Oh, we looked in your bed. Yeah, you should have looked in mine. I was in it for the first time in weeks. You'll never get ahead like that. Well, I, I finished with Morgan Hale, and I was just starting home, and they brought in the dearest little old lady you ever saw in your life. Yeah, what was the matter with her? Delirium tremens. <laughs> now you see why I don't want to practice. I like my sleep, and I don't like being tired unless I have fun getting that way. Hey, what time do we shove off? Well, uh, we can't go today. Why not? Um, well, I want to take out Morgan Hale's sutures. I feel a certain responsibility toward him. You understand, don't you, Uncle Doc? Oh, yeah, yeah I understand, and I approve. What about your responsibility to us? Yeah, and getting us to Chicago. What's the rush? This isn't a bad town to spend our furlough in. Uh, what? What? <laughs> I'll see you guys aboard ship. Yeah. Now, just a minute, Junior. Look, Lola begged me so hard to stay that I finally said, OK, baby, just for a couple of days. Mm. Well, that'll be fine. Then we'll all leave in a couple of days. Now, look, Eddie. Fuck this thing. Yeah, oh, I want to get a whole story. The first call I want you to make is on old Lady Tillsbury. Well, she was about to die eight years ago. What's wrong with her? Uh, nothing. Uh, she's practically immortal. But whatever you do, don't cure her. Uh, she pays my rent. Oh, well, if it ain't smelly and bright and early. Early, but not bright. What do you want? What's it to you? This is our barracks, you know that. Yeah, and it's out of bounds no. you, bud. Uh, just a minute, boys. How do you feel? Oh, well, I feel fine now, but this morning I woke up with a little bit of a headache. How alarming. Well, I was near a telephone and couldn't call you. But it occurred to me you might want to report. Well, thank you very much. It relieves my mind no end. Well, uh, what do you advise? I advise you to go home and close your eyes and your mouth. Should I lie down? Uh, unless you can sleep better standing up. Come back in two days and I'll remove the stitches. That's all. Yes, I can see this. Goodbye. There you are. Practically as good as new. Well, thanks a lot, Doc. As much as I disliked having my skull fractured, I'm sort of glad it happened, since it brought you and me together. That was Dr. Blake's loss. Oh, Doctor, why do you take that attitude to what? Suppose every girl in the world was coldly professional. Well, there'd be more surgical chairs and less love seats, I suppose. You're absolutely right. But what would happen to the census takers and the gentlemen who manufacture baby buggers and Christmas toys? In short, are you content to grow old and gray rolling pills? With the cigarette shortage, we may all have to. Do you intend to go on through life just painting the human form divine with mercurichrome? In short, Doctor, are you getting enough out of this racket to give up being alive? In short, I don't blame you for trying out your line on me. But the demonstration is free, and there's absolutely no obligation to buy, and it takes very little time. I agree with you. I have my dreams. They're modest, but I have them, and that's why, as fast as my little wheels will carry me, I'm leaving here. Leave here? Why, you can't leave here. Look, even if I stayed, what possible good could it do? Well, how do you know until I try? While you were telling me about my swan-like throat, I'd be looking down another man's larynx. Doctor, you are sordid, but you're beautiful. Don't you understand? Even if I stayed and helped Uncle Doc, I wouldn't have any time for you. Well, tell me, what can I do? What can I do? You can stand on the curb and wave bye-bye. But I don't want to stand on the curb and wave goodbye. Hey, Private Smith, come on, boot, fall in. Snap into it, look Let's alive. Let's going. Oh, oh, why don't you send the general a cable? Tell him you'll see him later. I kind of hate to let the general down. Oh, Thomas, I know he'd understand. Well, maybe. Just for a couple days, though. You guys go ahead. I'll hitchhike in later. Can you imagine that little wolf? He's built a nest for himself. Maybe he's got something there. <laughs> Obviously. Somehow, I'm almost sorry to leave Blythefield. What has Blythefield got that Chicago hasn't got? Smedley which is what I call a public improvement for Chicago. I know, but think of your uncle, Hetty. Think of me. Think of everything. Hey, wait a minute, Hetty. Hey! What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? Yeah, I'm crazy about you. Look, Smedley, why don't you give up? Maybe we'd better stop. Give it a gun, Dick. 
But she's my doctor and I need her. Do you want me to repeat the Hippocratic Oath? You start swearing in front of a lady and I'll punch you in the nose. Well, I'm going to read it for you. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to read it anyway. I swear by Apollo, the physician, and Escalapius, and the gods, and all the goddesses, that according to my ability and Where judgment, did you get that book? From your uncle. I will keep the book. Dead, I hope. I guess we'll have to take him back. What in heaven's name? Better take him to Foley Brothers in Cunningham and have it over with. In great Scott, what happened to him? A tree hit him on the head. Well, he'd better be careful of that head of his. It won't last for the duration. Put him up on the table, boy. Wait in the car. I won't be long. All right. Just a minute, folks. Priority has arrived. How does he look to you? <laughs> Remarkable. We'll start a medicine show and take him on the road. The man with the cast iron head. How are you feeling? Huh? How are you feeling? Oh, like, like a window with the Niagara Falls and a coal scuttle. <laughs> we better send him home. I don't want him hanging around here. Oh, Kravitz, Kravitz? Hedy, go out and tell Kravitz to call the ambulance, will you? She knows the number. Yeah. Well, I got her back. Nice work, nice work, but don't die on me, will you? I won't, but from now on, it's up to you to keep her here. I can't go on bashing my brains out forever. Yes, but you've got to do your part, too, you know. You've got to keep on playing sick for a little while, at least. Well, at this rate, it's not much of a trick. But I can't stay in a dazed condition indefinitely. You can't. <laughs> You've been doing all right since you met her. Yeah. <laughs> you want a cigarette? Thanks. You know, Doc, I was thinking, aren't there some sort of complications could develop out of this? You mean for fun or for keeps? Hmm. Just a few little aches of pain, just enough to keep her here. Yes, yes, yes. The first pain will be seven dollars and a half for an ambulance. Oh, fine. Golly, I've got a great idea. When you get, uh, <coughs> when you get home, telephone me. I'll tell you. Yeah. Oh, Doc. I'm right here. There goes another day. I was born in this town, but I didn't expect to die in it. Harry, Fun Center. He was on the phone all night. And again this morning. That mouthpiece is probably melted by now. <laughs> oh, here he comes. It's about time. I promised Uncle Doc I'd stop off and see Morgan. Haven't we seen enough of that guy? It'll only take five minutes. If it's uh, all right with everybody, I think I'll stick around a couple of days. What gives now? Tanya. Thanks for everything, Doctor. I'll see you on the ship. That's uh, goodbye to you, bub, in Russian. <laughs> Oh, lend lease. One Marine to Russia. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Dr. Fredericks to see Mr. Hale. Oh, hello. I'm so pleased to meet you. Morgan told me all about you. Oh, George! The lady doc is here. I'll be right down. Oh, I remember this old home. It used to belong to the Gilbert. Well, you've made it look charming. Thank you. Hiya, Doc. What do you think of the layout? Oh, I was just congratulating Mrs. Hastings. Let's sit down here. Just think, this all jumped right out of a box. You know, George invented the most wonderful little jack-in-the-box before the war, and all of a sudden they found out that the idea could be used on airplanes. Oh, it wasn't anything, really. I think the mechanical mouse was much better. You must be so proud of him. Uh, did Mr. Hale get home all right? Oh, fine. How is he feeling? Oh, just dandy. Good. Only, um... Some of his screws are loose. Oh, don't say that, George. Oh, poor Morgan. Just a minute. Would you mind reviewing the bidding? You know, we all live here together, and of course, I'm George's wife. Oh, she knows that. Go on. Morgan was always a perfect boarder, just like one of the family, but ever since he came home in the ambulance, he's been acting like, oh, what shall I say? Cuckoo. Well, what are the symptoms? Does he do anything unusual? I hope to tell you. Such as? Little things like hiding in the clothes closet. What for? He, uh, he says he's afraid. Oh, but 
test pilot. Afraid? That guy was never afraid of anything. I kind of hate to be telling you this behind his back, but something has to be done. It was bad enough when he was afraid of the bed, but... Yeah, it breaks my heart to see him come out of the clothes closet. Well, it's the guy's own business if he wants to sleep in the clothes closet, I suppose, but... Say, do you suppose that knock on the noggin had anything to do with it? Well, possibly, but not probably. Well, come on up and take a look at him, Doc, will you please? Here we go again. Just think, up until yesterday, he could fly the crates they come in. not here. He is, unless he's jumped out of the window. Let me see. His clothes are all here. Oh, I know. Come on out, honey. We've got company. What right have you to come breaking in on me like this? I don't want to see anybody. Please go away and leave me alone. Oh, wait a minute, Ralph. Wait a minute. Here, take it easy. Take it easy. Come on. We brought a nice lady doctor to see you. Sit down and be a good boy. Look. Madam, my name is Smedley, and I'm very glad to know you. Would you get my bag, please? It's in the car. Yes, Your name isn't Smedley. Your name is Morgan Hale. You only look like Smedley. Well, that's funny. Somebody told me my name was Smedley Hoover. Uh, could we have a glass of water, please? Why, Hetty, what are you doing here? Gee, I hate to have you see me looking like this. I feel terrible. Uh, tell me the truth, Doc. Do you think I'm minus a few buttons or something? Hmm? Mm. Oh, no, no, of course not. You're just as bright as you ever were, which may or may not be reassuring. Well, uh, what's the matter with me, then? Well, that's what we've got to find out. Now, tell me about it. Oh, I couldn't. It'll sound silly. <laughs> Don't let that stop you. You sounded silly before. Well, I've been banging around in airplanes for a long time, you know, and, well, I've been getting fuzzier and fuzzier. Just sitting in the ambulance, I was shaking like a bowl full of jelly. Well, that could have been caused by a shrimp salad. H has anything unusual happened lately? Anything that would give you these hoops and jingles? No. But I can't get the feeling of fright out of my mind. Here you are, Doctor. Oh, thank you. The paroxysmal tachycardia could indicate shock as a result of the trauma to the head. I'll give you a sedative. You'll have to stay in bed today. I was going to leave town, but... Will you bring him over to my uncle's office tonight? Oh, I can't leave this room. Why not? Because it scares me. Even you scare me, Doctor. Well, you scare me, too, so that makes it even. Goodbye, and it's been very busy meeting you. He's going under the bed again. Good, at least he won't smother. Everything happens to me. With all the doctors in the world, I have to hit the medical jackpot. What do you figure it is, Eddie? Well, I don't know. I never was very good at abnormal psychology. Pantophobia, I suppose. Fear of everything. Uh, how are you going to treat it? Uh, psychoanalysis, I guess. He really needs a complete reorientation. And I'll give it to him, if I don't lose my own mind first. Well, it's after 10. He won't be here tonight. Probably they couldn't get him out of the clothes closet. Uh -huh. You know, they all agree that in the treatment of neurosis, the practitioner must have frequent consultations with the patient, during which he's encouraged to talk freely of himself, his thoughts, and his past. Yes, I know. And then all of a sudden, up pops the villain of the piece, that small, hidden fear deeply embedded in the subconscious mind. But that'll take weeks and weeks, maybe months, maybe years. Yes, I'm afraid so. Uh, which of your cases would you like me to take over while I'm here? Why, Eddie, do you really mean that you will? <laughs> that never occurred to you, did it? Why, no, it hadn't. Liar. Well, now, let me think. Tomorrow I have an appendectomy, and the Wilkinson baby is... I'll have the Wilkinson baby. He's gone to bed. But she told us to bring him tonight. Oh, look here, I want to go home. Um, <clears throat> I think you'd better see him for a little while, hmm? In this? Well, why not? It'll make him feel perfectly at home. Oh. 
we must find the cause of this latent fear. We must bring it out into the open and discuss it. Once we've been able to consider it objectively, we'll be completely restored. Medley. What was that? Just the slap falling out of Kravitz's bed. Come on. Nothing will hurt you. Why doesn't Mrs. Kravitz get her slats fixed? Well, in these times, she'd have to marry the carpenter. Sit down. Oh, you sit here, too. I'll feel safer. Well, we'll have to begin by weaning you away from that. Yes. Now, what's your first recollection? When I was five years old, I had a little red wagon. Red wagon. I remember the name of the wagon was Lickety Split. It had little red wheels. Twin, seven. Got lost following organ grinder and monkey. Both had fleas. Is that right? Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, I think that's enough for tonight. But why? It's early yet. I was just about to go into my adolescence. I think you've been there quite a while. We'll continue the treatment tomorrow night. Do you mind if I kissed you good night? What? Because you're the only friend in the world I have, the only person I really trust. Well. Is that a kiss or a tonsillectomy? Oh, uh, we were just saying good night. Uh, well, I think you'd better send the patient home before the treatment starts to take effect, don't you? Yes. Um. Well, I guess we can shut up this asylum for the evening. Good night, Uncle Doc. Oh, no, we can't. Why not? They're sending a suspected glaucoma over from the plant. Oh, my. We ought to put a brass pole in this fire station. Would you like to see a suspected glaucoma? Well, it's awfully kind of you, but I, I don't think so tonight. Good night. Good night, Eddie. Good night, Miss Cravath. Good night. Uh, sit down a minute, will you, Cravath? You know, I'm afraid Hedy isn't as bright as I thought she was. She must take after your brother's side of the family. Yes, yes, I guess she... What was that? I only suggested this pantophobia idea out of sheer desperation, but I didn't imagine that she'd fall for it. She wouldn't if she were in her right mind, but she's in love. Of course, a hard-shelled old bachelor isn't supposed to know anything about women in love. Oh, is that so? Well, I know enough about women in love to have stayed a bachelor. Which, I might add, Kravitz, takes a great deal of skill and perseverance. But Hetty can't be suspicious, otherwise, why would she go through with this? Well, you will find the explanation on the R in Freud. Rationalization. Hetty believes the big moose is balmy because she wants to. Oh. You know, you wouldn't look it, but you should have been a psychologist. I am. Good job, Mr. Garnett. What do you think of that? <laughs> well. No newspaper this morning. The most amazing thing about newspapers, they spend millions of dollars gathering news from all over the world. Great editors sit up all night writing editorials to mold public opinion, and then long about daylight, they entrust it to a small boy to throw under a hedge. And it isn't even under the hedge. Yeah, what kept you, Hetty? Oh, that diphtheria. I got no reaction from sulfur, so at midnight, I called for oxygen. Uh -huh. Hey, Doc, yeah. looking for your paper? Yes. I got it. Oh, he's got it, Elmer Jones. <laughs> what happened to you? Oh, I had a fine night. I stopped off to see a bronchitis out in the country, and he coughed me to sleep. <laughs> right in front of the stove, too. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, oh, thank you, Elmer. You're sure you're finished with it, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is my niece, Dr. Frederick. Uh, howdy. Yeah. <laughs> Birds of a feather flock together, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know your uncle has been as busy as a one-armed paper hanger lately. <laughs> yeah, well. Well, we've both been kept at it pretty hard, Elmer. Well, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, so the fella says. <laughs> yes. Well, just a minute, Doc. Uh, maybe you could give me a little advice. You know, one good turn deserves another. <laughs> I, I've had a little trouble with my stomach lately, and every once in a while I go... Ah. Well, better an empty house than a bad tenant. <laughs> Say, i got to remember that. Yes, yes, add that to your collection. Well, uh, Doc, what do you think i better do about... Uh, this? Just take a little baking soda. When? Whenever you feel you want to stop burping. And how much? Uh, three bucks. Oh, no, I mean how much baking soda? Oh. <laughs> uh, what dosage would you prescribe, Doctor? Oh, if I were Mr. Jones, I'd sprinkle it on my hotcakes instead of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a million. Don't take any wooden nickels now. <laughs> no. Goodbye, Elmer. <laughs> Morgan should be here any minute. That is, if they could get him out of the closet. You know, you're going to spoil that pet squirrel of yours. This is Sunday. It's supposed to be a day of rest. 
You can't get any crazier between now and Monday. Come in, Uncle Doc. You know, I'm worried about Morgan. Well, so would I be if I had him. He doesn't seem to be showing much improvement. You know, Hetty, I, I think I know what your patient needs. Well, if it isn't a medical secret, I wish you'd tell me. Your patient needs what is described in the highest scientific circles as a sweetie. You know, sweetie. Well, he was having dinner the other night with a girl named Lola. He seemed very much interested in her. Is that so? Is she a nice girl? Oh, very. I don't think she had many brains, but... Well, if it's the same girl I saw him out with, she doesn't need brains. Anyway, Morgan's love life is something I can't discuss with him. Well, now, I don't know why not. You're his physician, aren't you? <laughs> this is funny. Oh, there ought to be a law against this, you know. Here I'm reading the comic strip, and it turns out to be an advertisement for toothpaste. Huh. I'm doing all I can for him, professionally. Yes, yes, so I noticed. But that kiss probably is worn off by now. Are you suggesting that well, I... Well, of course, if you're not sufficiently interested in curing your patient, you could probably find some other adorable girl for Well, him. I never heard anything so shocking. Well, now, what's so shocking about that? After all, a physician's job doesn't begin and end with writing a prescription, you know. Well, there's a limit. I suppose if you had a patient, a charming woman of 40, who needed romance, you... Sacrifice myself for the cause? Definitely. Uncle Doc, I'm amazed at you. Yeah, I'd be amazed at myself, but I'd make the effort. <laughs> Come and get him. Where is he? Down in the yard, playing with the duck. <laughs> <laughs> playing with the <a> duck. <laughs> I'm trying to teach this duck how to swim. Well, as Elma Jones would say, birds of a feather. Look, we can do tricks. But baby, he can do everything. <laughs> Yes, I was. You come with me. I want to talk to you very seriously. Where are we going? We're going over here. Have a nice little chat. Now sit down. There. Hey, but you have to sit down, too, because it scares me with you standing there looming over me. Well, let's get down to business. If, if you're going to get well, you and I must work very close together. Oh, well, that, that's great with me. The closer, the better. Well, now, many cases of maladjustment uh, originate with emotional frustration. You know what I mean. Well, uh, yes, I know what you mean by frustration. Well, I want to talk to you about an idea that Uncle Doc suggested. Dr. Frederick feels that what you need is more feminine companionship. Yeah, well, uh, which Dr. Frederick? <laughs> Uncle Doc. Oh, he, well, he's a very learned man, and he knows exactly what ails me. And this is my idea of good medicine. Hey, pardon me. Here, here, puppy. Here's a nice big stick. Look. Hey, look. Here, up, up, up. Go get it. There, there it is. Isn't there some girl to whom you're tremendously attracted? Only you, darling. Well, I think in our professional relationship, you might call me doctor. Call anything you wish, Dr. Dolly. Now, we'll find some girl for you, sweet and charming, to fill that aching void in your life. Oh, I may be void, but I don't ache. Now, I know a lovely girl, a patient of mine. You don't have to worry about a thing. I'll make all the arrangements. Oh! Oh! I find an alarming leukocyte change in the Nelson case. Order the operating room for 10 o'clock in the morning. An osteomyelitis operation, spinal anesthetic. And tell Mary to come in. Your general condition is very satisfactory, Mrs. Gage. Have the prescription I gave you, Phil. I will. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Come in, Mary. I'm certainly glad to see you. It's really very important. Is it about Morgan? Yes, I think I found the cause of his trouble. Sit down. I just know it's something awful. Well, it isn't yet. We have a fighting chance, if you'll help. I'll do anything in the world. Oh, Mary, Morgan needs a romance. And that's where you come in. But I'm married. Well, that's why I thought you'd understand and cooperate. Well, you want to see him cured, don't you? Yes, but still... You and George are devoted to Morgan. Well, 
George is awfully fond of Morgan, but oh, I don't think he's that fond of him. Well, I mean, you're in a perfect position to help, living in the same house and all. Well, I don't know what George will say, but... We've got to put Morgan on a very careful diet. He eats like a horse now. No, no, I mean a diet insofar as his appetite for women is concerned. We'll find a blonde or a brunette, it doesn't make any difference, and see which agrees with him. Good. Hello, Hetty. Hello, Stella. I've been wanting to thank you. Not that I can ever put into words what I feel. Well, you should really thank Uncle Doc. It was his idea. Oh, by the way, if you see Uncle Doc and Morgan, will you tell him I'm looking for them? Surely. Yeah. Thanks. Watch. Where on earth is Morgan? I can't find him anywhere. Poor Morgan. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. Come on, let's go get a snort of lemonade. Well, Doc, I'm getting awful tired of this. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you think I'm not. I never thought a man could be such a nuisance. Well, it was your idea. Hmm. Who's, uh, who's this Liberty Gibbet? Well, that's a gal by the name of Babe. Babe? Mm -hmm. I assume so. Who's this? That's a little girl from my hometown, New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm going back there one day. Yeah, but in the meantime, you keep on with this mental Mardi Gras, won't you? You can't weaken now, you know. If Hetty ever finds out, you're a lost lover and I'm a dead duck. Morgan! Uh-oh, you're on again. <laughs> Come in. Stop that. This is ridiculous. The party is being given for you. And here you sit like a... What are you afraid of down there? Miss Crabb. <laughs> well, I'm a little afraid of her myself. Everyone went to such trouble to arrange this party for you, Morgan. But I don't want a party. All I want to do is stay in the clothes closet. What do you do in there, by the way? I play with my tennis racket. Isn't it a little crowded? I pretend it's a mandolin. It's just like a mandolin, you know, except it doesn't make any noise. My, my, he's getting along just fine, isn't he? Come along. You've got to go down and mingle. But I don't want to mingle. If you ask me, I'd say he was mingled up enough as it is. I don't understand why a man can't enjoy the simple pleasures of life like sitting quietly in a clothes closet. Now, you must pull yourself together. We'll go down and I'll be with you, at least until we can find the right girl for you. Uh, you see, Morgan, we're trying to divert your interest. Yes. Oh, how about that girl in the blue dress? What? Oh. I'm scared of blue dresses. You see, the sky is a girl in the blue dress. She lures pilots higher and higher and finally they pass out. Oh, no, never a girl in the blue well, dress. all right, all right. We'll find a girl in another color. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, what's on your mind now? A girl in black. Oh, oh, well, I don't think she'd do you any good at all. Well, how can you tell until we try? Well, you can see at a glance what I mean. Oh, at a glance. I wish I were an osteopath. I, I, it's obvious we must find someone else. Bertha, she wouldn't scare you. Nice girl. No, she doesn't scare me. She terrifies me. Oh, nonsense. She's perfectly safe. No, 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 no. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Her husband was a patient of mine. It was on their wedding day, and he took her home from the church and gave her a quick kiss and came down with hydrophobia. Oh, it was a sad case. It really... Ah, now, look there. There's a cute little number. <laughs> By George, no bigger than a minute. You could put her on your knee and spin her like a top. I hope you realize that overstimulation is just as bad as being a blubberhead. And you're not much help either. Come along. I want her. Well, why can't I handle it? She can kill me of everything I got. Now, just dismiss it from your mind. I found just the girl for you. Dottie! This is Morgan Hale. How do you do? I, uh... <clears throat> you forgot to call because like, I left my photo <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll be down, Dr. Kelly. Don't go away. Well, well, hello, Dottie. 
deal on your diet, I see. Yes. This is the charming young sedative I've prescribed for our mental aberration. Mm. The cure might be worse than the disease here, though, don't you think? <laughs> well, Dottie, have a pleasant evening. <laughs> I will. If you can catch him. Darling, promise me you'll never look at another woman. On my word of honor, as a movie. As long as I'm in Blightfield. What's your address again, honey? I'll write you every day as soon as I leave Blightfield. As soon as you leave Blightfield, just address me care of the Skyland Cafe, darling. Well, you want me to keep up my morale, don't you? I'll keep it up at home with an apple and a book. Do you have a cigarette, Angel? Emotion when you left Dottie at her door, as I assume you did. Great relief. And then you drove directly home and went to bed. Oh, but I didn't go to bed. Well, what in the world did you do? Well, I met Tommy and Lola walking home, so I picked them up. Oh, how nice. And so I dropped Tommy off first. Well, why did you do that? Lola lives a lot closer. Well, I didn't want to have to come back and confess to you that I was a complete washout, you know, romantically. Oh, well, what has Lola got to do with it? I thought you and she had split up. Oh, well, it wasn't as final as that. After all, I'm more at home with Lola. Uh, yes, I can imagine. Well, she did all the spade work before I was sick. And, well, it's just a question of developing the property now. Well, I particularly didn't prescribe Lola. Well, I can understand that, too. There's a great therapeutic difference between a bland diet and raw meat. I know, but she's a brunette. I said bland, B-L-A-N-D. Oh. Now, to what conclusion did you come with Lola? Well, I was feeling my way. Carefully. It was amazing. When just for the experiment, while I was driving along, I put my arm around her like this, and immediately I became as bold as a bull. Uh, the simile is bold as a lion. <laughs> You're a good doctor. You certainly know what's good for what ails me. And then you drove her to her house. Well, not right away, because we got lost. <laughs> isn't that funny? Uh, hilarious. Yeah, she's a cuddly little thing, isn't she? I don't know. I never cuddled her. Well, we arrived at her house about... Dawn, and, and I you was... you kissed her goodnight. Well, yes, that was the only way I could predict. Well, I didn't want you to make a medical martyr of yourself. Oh, well, it wasn't bad at all. It wasn't bad at all. Yes, everything worked out fine. Uh, where? In the front of the fireplace. It was just like old times. She knew that I needed her help. And, well, she met me more than halfway. How kind of her. Yes. Mr. Hedy, will you come in a moment, please? I'd be glad to. You may as well go home. I've been thinking there really isn't anything more I can do for you. But you've done wonders. Think of last night. That's what I am thinking of. Well, I'll wait here. I know you want to have the rest of it. Don't you? You do want to have the rest of it, don't you? No. Well. Well, I suppose you know all about it by now. I'd love to hear more. Now, I told Morgan to tell you. That poor thistle head just can't seem to remember anything from one moment to the next. You know, it, it just all hit me like a load of bricks. No, thanks. But on the way home, I said to myself, Lola, honey, what are you waiting for? It must have all been very thrilling. Oh, it really was. Of course, he may not be the world's best bargain with things the way they are today, but after all, there's a terrific manpower shortage, and sister, does that man have power? <laughs> Nature has a very kind way of compensating. Mm -hmm. The less brains, the more brawn. Say, he isn't so dumb. You underestimate him. And anyway, whatever he doesn't know, I can teach him. We're going to be married the very minute MacArthur gives him a day off. MacArthur? Yes. He and Thomas work together, you know. Thomas? Uh-huh. You mean Private Smith? Yes. I call him Thomas. His mother calls him Thomas, too. Of course, General MacArthur can call him Tommy if he wants to. But somehow, I think Thomas is sort of more dignified. Don't you think so? Where is he now? Oh, he was so happy he just couldn't stand it. He's gone down to Gil Hooley's bar now to get drunk. Don't you think that's sweet? Well, how do you do, young lady? I was just leaving. Isn't my news too exciting? Uh, you'll never know how happy I am. Oh, thank you, Dr. Hetty. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, bye. 
How's your patient doing, Eddie? Well, I don't know. Every time I see him, he develops a new set of symptoms. Well, that must be fun. Well, I don't think fun is exactly the word for it. For instance, I've just discovered that he's a dreadful liar. He also suffers under the delusion that he's Casanova. Well, that's a very common masculine ailment. I suffer from it myself every spring. Well, I'm not so much worried about Morgan at this point as I am about Petty. Uncle Doc, something awful has happened to me. You don't say. I'm in love with him. Don't you understand? I want to be his Tootsie Pie. I'd be willing to set up housekeeping with him in a booby hatch. Well, birds of a feather, as Elmer Jones would say. Well, I know you don't go in for psychoanalysis, but do you realize the tragedy of it all? I'm a victim of transference. Patients always develop emotional relations with their physicians. Darnest thing I ever heard of. Well, he's in love with me now, but he won't care a snap of his fingers for me if I cure him. Darndest thing I ever heard of. Oh, stop saying that and tell me what I'm going to do. I can't leave him goofy. That'd be malpractice. And on the other hand... Well, now I'll tell you. Suppose he was cured. Cured and yet still in love with you. Would that be all right? That'd be a neat trick if you could do it. How do we begin? Well, the same way we got him goofy, I suppose. What was that, Uncle Doc? Well, now, he's a nice young fellow, and you were bound and determined to light out for Chicago, and he couldn't get anywhere with you. So, when he asked my advice... You suggested pandophobia and described the symptoms to him. Well, I had to do something to keep you interested here. <laughs> Seems to me everything's worked out fine. <laughs> I'm the one that should belong in a padded cell. I have the brains of a jaybird. And you, you old fraud, you have the professional ethics of a burglar. Pulling the wool over my eyes. You know, we were scared to death that you'd get wise to us any minute. <laughs> oh, I was suspicious all along. But then I'd hypnotize myself into some sort of a sweetly silly trance that everything was on the level. You and your amateur maniac. But don't be too pleased with yourself and your crackpot patient. Mr. Morgan Hale isn't cured yet. <laughs> On paper, it's perfect. I wonder how it'll be at 30,000 feet. That's what we're paying you a bonus of $1,000 to find out. Well, I'll admit it's a very soothing sum. I hope I live to spend it. Now, if our figures are correct. And if they're not? We've got a quarter of a million tied up in that ship. Yes. But if anything should happen, we won't hold it against you. Well, that's very nice. Dr. Hetty Fredericks to see Mr. Hale. Send her in. Dr. Frederick, to see you, are you a patient of hers? Uh, uh, yes, in a way. What do you mean in a way? You either are or you aren't. My goodness, if he's not in perfect physical condition. Listen, Slipstick, if you are as healthy as I am... He's a madman. Oh, he's, he's quite harmless, Mr. Pope. I've been treating him. For what? Pantophobia, a slight mental condition. It looks slight. Come out, Morgan. Hedy's here. There's no brain pathology. You mean there's no brain? No, he just gets frightened once in a while and can't resist the impulse to hide. Oh, I'm all right. How long has he been skittish like this? Oh, not long, and he's making a remarkable improvement. Uh, I can't take a chance. From now on, you're grounded. Oh, I can fly this. Tess, I'll take an oath on it. You have to be sane to take an oath. If I let this cuckoo leave the ground, they'll cancel my contracts. Will you accept my professional affidavit that he's fit to fly? Fit to fly? He's fit to be tied. A doctor's statement will clear him. Yes. Will you put it in writing? Notarized, with a degree of M.D. Will you guarantee it? If he'll do as I say. If he doesn't, he won't fly. What do you say, Morgan? All right. Let's go. I haven't had so much fun since I was a bloomer girl. Does she have to be so rough? Oh, I must warn you, this treatment's a little rugged. Of course, if you think you can't stand it. I can stand anything. Uh, dig into those ribs, Kravitz. I want to stimulate the circulation. That's it. That's all. That's enough. I don't want any more. Well, you want to get well and strong, don't not you? Not that well and not that strong. Just come right over here. Uh, will you please hold these? What are they for? Turn on the lightning. He'll make this under himself. Oh, Grace, help me! Oh, Scotty, help! Now, that is absolutely unnecessary. It's unethical. I don't yes, intend... Yes. I don't intend just, to stay here. Just get right quietly and relax. What's that humming? Honeybees. Honeybees? My, they're mad. Well, uh, what are they for? You, the sting of the honeybee has a markedly curative effect. Now, wait a minute, Miss Kravitz. You're my witness. 
I'm discharging her as my doctor, and I'm taking my case out of her hands. Don't you want to fly that test? Don't you want to get the $1,000 bonus? Yes, well, I do. Well, then be a big, fine boy down here. Do what the doctor tells you. Well, how many are going to bite me? Well, they'll work that out among themselves. Great balls of fire! Those things hurt! Pardon. There they are. Now we take this off. You... Four million of them must have bit me. I never... Get into the seat, cabinet. Not I'll too relaxing. But well, this is the last thing I'm going to yes, do. I'll tell you that. You're going to like this. Too I... bad we haven't got a cross-cut saw. I'm sorry I haven't started this. Yeah, I imagine. Besides, I never ate such a treatment. Well, a physician and surgeon can use any means indicated to cure the patient. That's our first obligation. That is in the Hippocratic Oath. Oh, Morgan's very well acquainted with the Hippocratic Oath. He rides along the highway reading it aloud. Oh, seriously, Doc. I'm very serious. Yeah. How long do you think we ought to cook him, Dr. Hedden? Well, how much do you weigh? I weigh 190 pounds. It's awful well, hot in here. Well, if we want him well done, I'd say about two hours in a slow oven. Two? Oh, Doc, let me well, out. on the other hand, we could just kind of brown him on the outside and leave him rare in the middle. Would you get the ice bath ready, please? You can come out now. Are you trying to kill me? Yes, it's all right. I refuse to do another thing. You're invading my privacy. This is a cruel and unusual punishment. I love my clothes. What kind of an institution is this? Well, of course, if you're afraid of a little ice bath, we can wrap you in cotton batten and send you home. Afraid? You want me to get in there? Yeah. Well, I'm going to show you once and for all that I'm not afraid of anything. Well, that's fine. If that's true, you're practically <laughs> joking. Oh, no, no, you don't. Easy now. There. Once you get in, it isn't bad at all. That it's kind of nice, really. <laughs> nice when you get used to it and do the world of good. It's really. This will fix it up fine. If I ever get out of this thing alive, I'll settle with you. Yes, you bet you are. The bill's going to be a pit, too. <laughs> you can take him out now, Kravitz, before someone shoots him for a walrus. Oh, this is... this is cold. <laughs> You're almost through now. What's the matter? Can't you think of anything else to do to me? Well, I might if I put my mind to it. I want my pants. Uh, pants for the patient with pantophobia. What have you got to say for yourself? If I live. Congratulations. Is that all? Yes, only that now the joke is on you. Jo joke? You mean it? Uh, if you'll pardon me, I'll be on my way. Whenever you come to Chicago, let me know and I'll fly to Seattle. <laughs> all right, we'll get it to a room quick. Easy now, take it easy. Hello, baby. It's Morgan. How do you feel? Oh, I'm all right. You can't be doing this. Doing what? Bashing your head in. That's my department. Oh. We need you around this town, don't we, Doc? I need you. You have a wonderful bedside manner. <laughs> 